just cannot get rid of the, the magic that happens between the image and the person that looks at it and the person that's creating it. So you really need to appreciate this work and appreciate this space when it's when this building and the images in it have gone. artist in residence in the space gallery at the moment. I've been here since uh, the middle of June. Um, I'll be here until the middle of November, working on a giant charcoal epitaph to the building before it gets demolished and replaced with the, the new building. I think if you can make art which affects somebody else, by the time you've made the art, conceived and made the art, it has already affected you. I deliberately tried to narrow down my palette um, right the way down to charcoal and pencil um, to work on a very basic level of, of the mark making um, to go back to the, the primary language of art or drawing. The wonderful thing about the last six months has been the, the sort of the opportunity to meditate quite deeply on the process of drawing, the act of drawing um, and to create something that didn't have a brief to start with. And the more I look at it, the more I'm seeing things in it as well, because I sat in the talk yesterday and just, I was down that end of the room. So I'm now concentrating on the back of it because I miss so much and there's still things I'm seeing now. But really I think you need to spend about a week here actually having a proper look at the whole room because it is so incredible. I'm hoping that you've, you've maybe in some way uh, related to some of the stuff that's on, on the wall. Um, as you know, uh, I used to be a student here. This used to be my studio space behind that wall. Um, I had my own little stage area um, where I was first sort of turned on, if you like, by drawing with charcoal and the sort of liberation of getting out of the sketchbook um, and sort of physically drawing with your hands, with your body, uh, reaching out and uh, being at one almost with material just sort of felt very comfortable. We have all sorts of familiar classical, either Greek, Roman or Christian uh, imagery, icons, characters, which we have a, have a relationship with. We either know their story very well or we certainly have an idea of what they're associated with. So when you're looking around, you will find familiar creatures, familiar references, some of them may be obvious in what I'm trying to say. Some of them may be less so. There are reference to, references to technology, for example, hidden within here. There are references to humanity, to romance, to love, to destruction, to war, to the whole gamut of the human sort of condition, if you like. I'm not trying to give any sort of answers, but I think the work should always, art should always provide at least some questions, at least some kind of distraction. And if we are to sort of compete with the everyday clutter around us, then I think that we do need to make that effort to make something special. It will be a part of the history of Portsmouth. Nobody can stop it. Because it will be definitely covered in so many documents, so many books, so many other things. And it, it, it will be a permanent feature of Portsmouth. I loved it. Um, I started, I guess, as an artist in my uh, sense of declaration that I am an artist. <laughs> Upon graduation, I think you make a decision as to 
what your vocation is and where you're going to go in life and where you're going to spend your energies, your creative energies. Um, I knew that I wanted certainly to give it a shot, um, working as an artist and by that I mean uh, professionally uh, and earning a living from it as well as just practicing and making stuff. Uh, I think for me the whole act of public art isn't just the product, it's about everything that goes behind it, it's about convincing um, the local communities, the commissioning body, the local politicians, that actually you know you can be brave and do something different. You can have something outside of the box. You tend to need to have your favourite one as the, the one that you're working on on the day. You need to try and believe in the one that you're doing the most, otherwise you're either not going to do another one or you're going to deny everything that you've done before. And I think you, you have to try and approach the things that you're producing with a sense of belief in what you're doing. Um, you ought to believe in it um, because there will be those dark years because it's not all about the fun of creativity. There's bureaucracy, there's politics, there's personalities, there's emotions, there's practical issues, there's time constraints, there's all sorts of things um, to try and uh, spoil the idea that this is your favourite piece ever um, but you need to hold on to the the joy that you can have looking back on things um, that might not be immediately apparent. to be destroyed, that, that you can talk about it but you'll never be able to see it again and you inevitably get this myth of you've just done the largest charcoal drawing ever. Did you see it? It's, it's gone now, it's, it never really existed, it's, a, it's again added to its own myth, it's no longer there. Was it ever there? I don't know. Did I do that? I don't think so. <laughs> it's there in terms of photographs but it's not there in terms of a tangible, awful, dusty reality of, of, a, of a big drawing. I think it's probably over. There might be um, some temporary jobs on the labour on the building side, but I don't think that there's any opportunities in terms of adding anything uh, in an academic sense. Who knows? But it would be nice to be involved in some way. Um, it would be nice to leave a ghost drawing within the builds of the new plaster in the wall, but we'll see.